Hi everyone and welcome. In this recording, I'm going to be speaking about this upcoming full moon taking place in the sign of Leo on the 16th of February 2022 at around 27 degrees of Leo. Now, even before I get into the astrology of this energy, the very first thing that I would like to mention, this is yet another full moon that is taking place at this 27 degree. In any way, it is the last degrees of the sign where it takes place. And like always, this says something. It is not that very usual or common that a large number of full moons in succession take place at around this degree. And because this is already considered a pretty anoretic position, so very, very close to that 29 degrees, well, it does represent that it has to either bring a very important closure, reveal a very, very impactful and important truth, awaken some very important, if that even makes sense, feelings, because usually an anoretic full moon will awaken certain emotions, certain feelings, certain memories, or it might just simply stir us up emotionally in order for us to be and stay in the awareness of something very, very important that will guide us to perhaps a life-altering decision, choice, something that we do, something that we say. So these series of anoretic full moons that we had the last couple of months in our lives, we had these all autumn and winter and now even at the beginning of the year. So those months, those karmic events that might have been playing out in our lives over the past couple of months well, they were preparing, and still are, of course, preparing us to take a very important quantum leap or a big life change, a big new beginning, rearranging and changing very many important but small elements in our lives simultaneously. For some people, it simply means cutting off the past for good and just breathing and living life much more freely than ever before. But of course, this highly depends on our personal circumstances, our personal situation, because these full moons prepared us personally based on our life story and our situation in order to embrace the new when destiny will come knocking at the door, of course. But for some people... It already knocked and now these full moons just make whatever entered their lives unexpectedly be able to grow, be able to have space, be able to expand and become permanent basically. And of course, the new moons were also very symbolic at 12 degrees. So it's not just the full moons. It was also the new moons as well, which delivered a very strong message with this 12 degrees. And usually 12 degrees means that we need to evolve something, evolve ourselves, uh, give more energy, creativity, freedom, passion to something in our lives so that it can expand, so that it can prosper, so that it can thrive. Now to go back on our subject, this full moon in the sign of Leo, well first of all yes, this is also one of those 27 degrees full moons, so it will definitely matter a lot, especially emotionally, and at the same time, whenever we have a full moon, the moon always activates our emotional world, it stirs us up. Our feelings become that much higher, that much stronger, that much more intense. And this time, the intensity is greatly amplified by the sign of Leo. Leo is all about the heart. Leo is all about the passion, the feeling. Leo is basically living life in the now, in the present. 
Leo is the home of the sun, so basically it is the house of our consciousness, our identity, our inner child, our creative center. So basically the emotions specific to Leo are always very, very strong and very passionate by their nature. And if we add to this a full moon, so a lot of watery energy as well, well, you know, when water and fire meet, they make a lot of steam, so the pressure is on. Now, of course, individually speaking, this can be the most delightful emotional pressure, emotional shock, emotional intensity, let's say, for example, for a lot of people, especially if this 27 degrees of Leo falls into your fifth house, it might fall into your seventh house, or maybe on your ascendant, or maybe even third house. This can represent a fantastic new love story, new attraction, a new person entering your life who is definitely going to shake up everything. It is going to act like a wrecking ball where the tall building is your sense of normality. So let's hope that this might be an emotional inferno, a volcano erupting as a surprise and the delight and the magic of the moment when you encounter someone new and you fall in love or someone who you are already in love with says yes or anything like that. And the main reason why I think that this full moon is going to be a lot about falling in love with a person, with an activity, with a theory, with an ideal, with a philosophy, basically anything in life that is susceptible to love. For example, the inner child. For mothers, well, that is very simple. They will just have either a surprise or a very intense moment with their child. Let's hope that this will turn out in the best possible expression, not the worst kind, where the child might really, really irritate the parents and it will cause a lot of drama. Or if the parents find out something shocking or something unsettling, something rebellious that the child is planning to do. But anyway, what makes me think that this will be a lot about love relationship, commitments of any kind, because even if it's like a love for a new job, a new passion, new hobby, new activity, that can lead to commitment, of course. And the reason why I think this is because at the time of this full moon, we have, by the degree conjunction of Venus and Mars in the sign of Capricorn and both of these planets speak in harmony with Uranus so this can be very surprising this in itself already adds a positive delightful shocking in a good way energy signature to the manifestation of this harmonious conversation and also, the sheer fact that Venus and Mars are dancing together in the sky. They are performing their own celestial cosmic act of union, act of love. Well, this full moon is under the greater energy and influence of the Venus and Mars conjunction. A very important energy. These two planets meet roughly every two years or so. And every time that they meet, their meeting represents the specifics of how relationship, connections, romance, love, anything of Martian and Venusian of nature are going to play out the specific way, the specific imprint of the sign where they dance. So how that is going to influence connections, love, romance, or ambition, passion, etc. Anything, I repeat of Martian and Venusian nature in that period. So that is very, very important. Because connections, even encounters, romantic encounters, anything that we commit to, a job, a career, everything basically that sparks up our interest has the potential, as I said, under the Venus and Mars conjunction to be permanent, 
to be long term, to be grounded, to be serious, to be lasting, to be valuable, to be almost permanent, to be reliable, all the higher traits of Capricorn, of course, it is also going to be extremely intense. And that intensity sometimes also, let's say, harms a little bit because fire burns everything around it. But the fact that it embodies the energy of Capricorn, so stability, seriousness, permanence, doing things by the book, displaying caution, diligence, mastery, profound knowledge, all of this makes it so very much worth it. So I do believe that this Mars and Venus conjunction bless this full moon greatly, especially for those people for whom this will mean making a commitment, because at the end of the day, one of the main aspects that this full moon holds is the moon is quincunx, so a minor celestial conversation an in conjunction with Pluto, and Pluto in Capricorn is all about transformation, change, but a very, very powerful long-term and profound one, a transformation where it, the, the surgical knife, Pluto, goes to the very, very bottom of the tissue that it's operating on. So whatever this full moon may conjure up in our lives individually, it will be a reflection of how much of our lives have already changed and transformed along with everything in our hearts, Leo, of our value system, of our own philosophy, for example, about love relationship, the way we perceive and understand emotionally through our heart-spaced life in the now, because Leo is very much in the now, so it will also be a reflection of everything that we went through, everything that we did, and in any way our lives transformed already due to everything that has happened in the world in our lives. But of course, for other people, this also adds something to it, like a new information, a new sense of direction, what it is that we need to do after the transformation, because this Pluto acts like a snake who shed off the skin. The old skin is there, it is dead, it is no longer usable, so we need to let it go. And what it is that we need to do with our new skin, where we go, what we do with it, how will we manage it in this next cycle. And sometimes there are certain directions, turns, choices, decisions in life which are very, very important, but we just know that we cannot make it ourselves, as in we can simply not accept the full responsibility for choosing something so, so important that will perhaps last for a lot of years, so we ask for help. We ask for divine wisdom, even those people who simply have nothing in common with spirituality. It is in our instinct to ask. And Leo is also a pretty instinctual sign in its own special way. So we ask for guidance, we ask for clarity, we ask to be in harmony with the course of fate. As I said, even those of us who only ask this internally, passively, even without knowing, well, that is exactly when a moon and Pluto quincunx can just tilt us into the right direction, when instead of us, fate comes with 50% of the choice already made and shows us that this is the right path for us personally. And because this is Leo energy, this mostly appeals to the heart, to the feeling, to emotion, how we feel about it. How does whatever we might receive as a revelation at this time, well, what does it mean emotionally? Because chances are, the practical, cerebral, rational, logical, the mercurial information we already will receive by the time this full moon takes place, because Mercury 
already direct, has already entered back into Aquarius territory. So it has information, it has clarity, and now Mercury, so our mental sphere basically, symbolically, is seeking the connections. It is seeking the information exchange, the communication, or as I said, simply social connections, and the way to execute the plan with intelligence. But sometimes Mercury and that intelligence it has, it's not enough. We also need courage, Leo, and a full moon in Leo. We need that courage, we need that impulse, we need that motivation, and we also need the ugly truth, Pluto quincunx the moon, regardless of how and what nature the situation is, because sometimes it is only the ugly truth, that which we just cannot close our eyes in front, that gives us the true sense of direction. Because if we simply cannot accept to live with a compromise or whatever that ugly truth means, well, of course, that will change our future plans. But if we find enough resilience, power, courage within us to live with it, well, that can also change our plans very quickly because Pluto is also power. A compromise can give us power. It can give us money, Capricorn. It can give us influence, strength, or inner determination. But of course, all of this under the Mars and Venus conjunction So it also speaks to our passion. It is also very needed for us to move on and start embracing our futures. Whatever this full moon holds for us personally, even if it's just an information, while it's still very, very important and it will represent like a big milestone that we have already completed this year, towards keep on building and putting brick after brick on our futures, that which we are trying to create right now. And of course, co-create, because right now we wake up that our futures, like it or not, are pretty much interconnected, because the power of the people cannot triumph without the people being part of it. And collectively, yes, you guessed it, that is exactly the bigger symbolism of this Leo full moon because it will shock us, but collectively. So that means something takes place on the world stage. And if we look at the world stage, what do we have here? Venus and Mars conjunction, which does represent a new alliance in the world stage or an alliance getting stronger or... You know, the military conflict between NATO and Russia, something very relevant happens there, as in a new partnership being born or anything like that. Of course, Mars and Capricorn means a lot of material work, so everyone involved with fixing the bigger problems of the world, well, it's going to be working very very hard this period, but the result of their work Whatever that means, may it be the medical domain, the financial, the economic, political, legal, etc. It might shock people because that is the Pluto and Moon Quincunx. Something is being revealed. Something about corruption, about money, what happens with the financial situation. Or the result of an investigation, also a Moon Quincunx Pluto. What happened with the way the virus broke out, who was responsible, when, why, or any kind of solution that centralized power want to implement aggressively, people might rebel against that, especially that another important exact aspect that this full moon holds is a trine, an exact trine with the galactic center, and that means that it is also divinely guided, it is divinely orchestrated, and it activates our instincts, our courage, our bravery. It basically infuses us with a strong divine elation almost to believe that much stronger in our purpose. And this is collective energy. So our collective purpose is to already start living life 
with whatever new normality means. Everyone just wants to live. And this is gonna be the big fight around this time. And chances are, people are definitely gonna take to the streets. Because this new moon also trines Eris, goddess of discord, rebellion, the freedom fighter, the revolutioner. And because moon in Leo is also courage. But not just an instinctual type of courage. But also a divinely or better said internally mustered courage because the moon is our emotional world moon is our collective emotion the the feelings of the people you know collectively speaking so this will be a big energy of bravery or outburst or people demanding something and as i said also mars and venus conjunction join uranus fight for freedom but one with victory attached to it this energy has the potential to be quite victorious because if we look at the other configuration of the sky, well, at this time, almost all relevant planets are direct, which means momentum, which means action, which means haste and quickness. Then also we have a very, very activated Uranus. Mars activates, energizes Uranus. And those two planets are the quickest energies of the Zodiac. So that means very, very quick action. That means that people can no longer wait for freedom, Uranus, for breakthrough, for revolution, to be living their futures already. Again, Uranus. And you know, Mars energizes, empowers. It gives way for whatever people are fighting for to be victorious. Now, another very important energy, Uranus is also energized by a sextile formation by Jupiter, and Jupiter expands. Jupiter is extremely well, comfortable, powerful, and as mysterious as it could possibly ever get, because it's in home sign of Pisces, it's nocturnal home, where it's able to bring forward its most unbound qualities. And if we expand with this energy, an already blazing, powerful, active, super magnetically charged Uranus, that means unexpected surprises coming in chains. Of course, this can also have physical repercussions like earthquake, like explosions, fire, some accident or anything that can shake the earth, basically, because that is Jupiter and Uranus conversation. But it can also represent that it comes from water, because Jupiter is in Pisces, the sea, ocean, anything to do with water. So it can also be like a tsunami or flooding or something to do with water. Or it can also have a lot to do with toxicity or toxins, pollutions, some infection, virus, new mutation, because this full moon, uh, the moon squares the nodes of the moon in Taurus and Scorpio. And this nodal square is also another surprise element. It adds urgency. It adds a certain kind of positive frustration, if that makes sense. Because, you know, we cannot rest. We really have to do whatever it is that we're guided towards, may it be individually and collectively, for our futures, especially materially, for our values or Scorpio, to get out of debt or anything that might enslave us, or simply to heal ourselves from whatever has been troubling us psychologically, karmically, mentally, in any way, shape or form. So this full moon will give us a lot of courage and this courage will stay with us, perhaps till the summer. Because, you know, trining exactly the galactic center, that's a big thing. That says that the divine wants to act through us. And for a lot of us, whatever this Leo full moon conjures up, both individually and collectively, of course, it is a blessing. It is a present. But the present that is basically uh, downloaded, if that makes sense, into our heart space. 
So it will give us the emotion, the feelings, the courage, the passion, the creative impulse even. So this doesn't have to be warrior energy, especially individually. It can be job, creativity, love, romance, playfulness, freedom, relaxation, or to change your life, to detox, to change your routines, to change anything basically. So this gives us the power. It's almost like... The universe, the galactic center in Sagittarius, of course, animates us, empowers us. And also, the Mars and Venus conjunction holds a semi-sextile, a minor astrological aspect, but with the great attractor, a really strong spatial anomaly, which means that whatever we have lost during the last three, four years of our lives, and I'm speaking about major losses, because this is Capricorn, so it means something that held our life together for a long time and we lost that. May it be an, an object, a person, a, a home, a situation, a job, a career, etc., etc. If we might have lost something very important, now we can replace it. Not by the same thing, of course, but with something, especially karmically and energetically speaking. If we lost something or someone... This is where, under this Mars and Venus conjunction, we can attract something in our lives, either to permanently or maybe just temporarily take the place of what we lost, so that we don't have a great void within ourselves. And going back to the symbolism of the energy collectively, well, because this moon holds a square with the North Node in Taurus and the South Node in Scorpio, well, this tell, tells me that, you know, this will be a fight for breakthrough from any way, shape or form, especially depending on what you need in your community, in your country specifically, because it's going to be different in every place of, in the world, because the problems are different, because the Leo energy is different. Different nations, different people, different ethnicities. Well, they have different feelings, so to speak. Their heart space is different. Their traditions and customs, the way they express themselves, the way they manifest their collective identity is different. This is also important, Leo energy. How we express ourselves. So, of course, the problems that will cause... The emotional awakening, well, these are going to be different everywhere. Each, each nation, each country, each territory, so to speak, has their own unique problems or whatever provokes people to join forces and emotionally, at least, choose awareness. And, of course, speaking about the collective expression of this energy... Because Pluto is at 27 degrees, which means the Pluto return of the United States in the second house of economy. And this full moon activates that Pluto-Pluto conjunction for the US by holding the quincunx, both with the natal Pluto and also with the transiting Pluto, while well, some news or some change, some event will definitely take place in the US, and that will revertebrate, that will come as a shockwave everywhere around the world. Of course, what exactly that is, is unpredictable, to be totally honest with you, because under this very, very strong energized Uranus, we just simply cannot predict. We cannot make valid predictions, because it wants us to be wrong, in the sense, it wants all of this to be a surprise for everyone. So we cannot outsmart, out-tactic, out-anticipate Uranus. And perhaps this is one of the biggest lessons of wisdom in astrology. When Uranus wants to have its way, the astrologer has to sit on the eagle's perch and just observe and learn. So we shall see what takes place in the world, especially in the US, in the next couple of months, because this Pluto return 
is going to be active all through 2022 and even 2023. So there is a lot of time when surprises can happen. But I need to mention that this February is going to be one of the bigger exact moments of that Pluto return. So this February can be very, very interesting. And whatever happens in the US, of course, foreshadows whatever will take place in the world. So this concludes today's recording. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here and allowing me to play a small part in your journeys. If you'd like to keep on supporting my work or maybe sponsor it, you can find the PayPal link in the description below. With this being said, thank you again for listening. And like always, I dedicate this horoscope to the memory of my mom. With this being said, thank you so much again for listening. Wish everyone a magical full moon. Until next time, bye for now.